At this time, could I have a motion to return to regular session, please? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. At this time, I will turn it over to the floor to the public. The first person on the list is Tom DeCastro. Tom. Hi, kids. Me again. Uh, get used to me because I'm going to be here until the wrong is righted. It's time that we look at the whole situation. Amy, as president, your leadership should have been on this from day one. And obviously it hasn't occurred. Which in my mind, maybe in the mind of many others, you're complicit with a cover-up. It's against board policy and state law. It's time you do something. Tom, I, I made it clear last time. You made it clear that you talked to the lawyer, you cost the district money in calling him, and nothing has changed. You haven't done anything. It's just talk. It's time for action. It's time for this entire board to do something. Thank you. I, can I ask? Tom's going to keep coming back. He's not going away. If Amy, you talk to our attorney and you've got an opinion, can we request that, that attorney he shared information with you? You haven't shared that with the board. He, because he hasn't. No, he shared. hasn't. He hasn't come well, to the Amy. He hasn't shared the result. Right. Okay. There hasn't been a result. There hasn't been a. There is a no, no clear indication that Jim needs to step down, and he's still in the process of. Working. I think what we need is for him to come to this board meeting, next board meeting, and talk to the whole board and tell us where the whole thing sits. Let's get it resolved. Why should we keep yeah, we pushing it down? It down. It's it's like we, I, and I understand. I, I think you know. I think we all want it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I agree. And I also think. I mean, if we need to, just because. I mean, you guys have been in this longer, this situation, than we have. But if we need to take it to the commissioner, then let's do it and just be done with it. And yeah, it's it's not not I mean, it's yeah. Exactly. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. exactly. I mean, the yeah. community's asking all the time, what's going on with yeah, the what's the deal? Exactly. 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 Well, who knows about the rule, right, until we get presented it. And so we reach out to the attorneys that they guide us. So that's what we're waiting for. So can somebody request to come to our next meeting? I can. Yeah. Thanks. Next um, on the list is, excuse me if I don't pronounce them correctly, Don Neubauer Bauer and Charles Borgononi from the Central New York School Boards Association. Okay. If you like to come up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, for those of you who uh, I may not have met, uh, I know I've met many of you over the course of the almost eight years now, I've been the executive director of, of CNY SGA. Uh, you know that, that I, I've come up tonight uh, to see if we can't uh, get Oswego back into our association. Uh, and Don, who's the president of not only our board, but the Fabius Poppy Board, is going to talk a little bit about what the association has meant to him. Uh, I think most of you are familiar what it is we do. Uh, I call our mission a 50-50 mission. 50% 50 of what we do are trainings, leadership development, professional development, to help you all be as good as you can possibly be uh, in your responsibility as a school board member. And the responsibility is being amped up all the time. I'm you know, not saying anything out of school uh, in that regard. The other 50% of what we do, uh, which I think is especially important in our region, uh, we have uh, 54 eligible school districts uh, in all or part of eight counties around Syracuse. It's a huge, it's a huge territory. There are actually 30 uh, organizations like CNY, SBA, in New York State that, that the state legislature created about 40 years ago to help school board members because the responsibilities were ramping up all the time. Um, the other 50% as I referred to is advocacy work particularly focused on school finances and state aid. 
the vast majority of CNY SBA districts are categorized by the state as low wealth, high need. My philosophy is if you don't get your fair share of state aid, you can't fulfill the mission. Um, particularly in a state that has one of the most regressive distribution processes for state aid in the United States. The statistics bear that out. We're no different than Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, in terms of how we distribute state aid. So that's why we put 50% of what we do into the advocacy work that we do. Uh, and and we've, had, we've had great success. Uh, how many of you here remember something called the gap elimination adjustment? Uh, our organization, uh, along with Dr. Rick Timms and the Statewide School Foreign Finance Consortium, which is part of our association, put that issue on the map statewide when nobody was talking about it. And I can say that because when I came into the job and I heard the term GEA, I asked Rick, what is this issue? He explained it to me. I said, that's got to be our issue. We led the charge on getting that repealed, or we still might be paying it to this day. We were able to get other school boards associations like our own on board and other associations uh, on board, uh, and, and we got that changed. Now we're in a circumstance right now uh, where, uh, as you know, state aid is going down, resources do not flow to districts like we have in this region. This is why we depend, uh, we put so much of our time, as I said, um, you know, into this effort. Um, we are only as strong as an association uh, based on the membership that we have. And actually, our percentage we have, we have of the 54 eligibles, we have 50 uh, of those districts are members and have been longtime members. Uh, we really need to have 100% uh, membership uh, for us. As, as, as I say often to folks, we are a modestly staffed and modestly financed nonprofit organization. Every dollar is, 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 is very, very important to us. Uh, so, we're making a special effort this year to try to get those four districts, Oswego included, back into the association. But there's another, there's another uh, reason I wanted to put this on the board to you. We are also in the midst of changing the dynamic of the Central New York School Boards Association. Uh, first of the year, we relocated with the Manufacturers Association of Central New York and partners for education and business. We are currently exploring an affiliation of some kind of the three groups. Uh, the focus of that effort is to get us, as the policy makers for public education in this region, more closely aligned with business creators uh, and particularly the high-skilled manufacturing sector. Uh, what our aspiration in doing this is, is to partner with NAPI in such things as P-TECH schools. They have an apprenticeship program that they started for the skilled trades that needs to be fed by pre-apprentice programs, which would be based in the high schools, uh, and other job development uh, opportunities. In the eight years I've been in this job, if, if, if I I've heard this once, I've heard it a million times from school board members. School board members are largely motivated by the whole notion of how can we keep our kids in central New York? How can we keep them here? There are jobs that exist out there. We've got to match the skill sets up to the opportunities that exist out there. And there are a lot of opportunities right now to get back to getting kids trained in the skilled <coughs> trades. Uh, many, many, many of these trades, I can tell you being affiliated now with, with the Manufacturers Association, if you've got the right skill set, you could literally walk out of high school into a job that you're going to start at somewhere between fifty and seventy thousand dollars a year. We've got to play more of a role in that. So 
I think it's a very exciting time for our association right now. We're growing, we're trying to do new things, but again, we're only strong. We're only as strong as our membership is. Um, what we wanted to try to do to get you interested again in, in, coming, uh, in coming back with CNY SBA was to offer you one year at half dues, uh, which would come out to just about $3,400 for the year. Uh, and to make everything available uh, to your association uh, at no charge. Uh, and actually one thing came to my attention uh, when I got back from vacation uh, a few days ago, uh, that we made that offer, which Tom took, took, uh, took advantage of, and our bookkeeper erroneously billed you for that invitation to come and do it for free. She'll be back in the office next week. The check will be in the mail, uh, so you will get, you will get reimbursed for that, I promise you. So with that, I don't want to take too much time. Uh, I know I've probably taken more than I should, but um, I'd be happy to meet with you uh, again. Happy to discuss this with any of you. Um, you know, uh, we, just, we just hope that you'll consider coming back uh, into the association with us. And with that, I'd just like to have Don try to land a couple questions. Sure, sure, you Sam. Uh, you said $3,400 it's full year, is that half? In other yes. words, is the, uh, right. the fee for a full year uh, six, eight? Yes, it would be. Uh, our dues are based on our WADA. Uh, so the bigger the district is, the, the higher the dues are, and then we cap that um, at $10,000 at ten thousand dollars for like a Syracuse City School District. That's right. that's what they pay. So, but the Oswego School District would be about $1,600. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. You said there were four four school districts that do not belong, we are one of them? Yes. What are the other three? Pulaski. So we'd like to get Oswego County 100% in, mm -hmm. and then two in Cayuga County, uh, Union Springs and Weedsport. Have they given you any indication why they have an opt Well, in, 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 the, uh, in the case of, uh, of Pulaski and Weedsport, uh, they haven't been members for 20 some odd years. Uh, I've got to try to change that dynamic. Not like us, we belong and then wrapped out with us when we, when we wrapped out with the money. Yeah. And, we were going yeah. Through some and, I, and I would say, and I would say that that's 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 true. When we've lost members in the past, and we've lost some and been able to get them to come back, that's what it usually that's what it usually boils down to. Uh, but I think the thing that that we bring to the table. Uh, you know, more than, than any other association is, our focus is on this region. You know, for instance, you did well with your state aid increase this year, and I know there, there was some puzzlement about why that happened. You know, that's because we work the region. We provide data uh, and we do advocacy on behalf of all of the schools in this region because there's a lot of commonality from the perspective of being high need low wealth, uh, you know, and that was something that, that you benefited from. Uh, Basically, you act as a lobbyist for school districts if you want to your organization. Not only me, our, our well, members do as well. Our members are involved. We work very closely with all of our superintendents. We work very closely with the JMT of the four OCs that we have in the region. And by the way, that's a significant resource for us. We're the only one of 30 one of these 30 organizations in New York State that has four BOCES within it. That gives us, uh, you know, a little bit of a better reach in Albany. This affiliation that we're working on with MACNE, where when we go to Albany now and we can walk in the door with a job creator and a taxpayer along what, with yeah, us. Explain MACNE, what is that? The Manufacturers Association of Central New York. They are a trade organization for about 300 uh, largely high-skilled manufacturing companies in about 26 counties uh, in New York State. Uh, and what their role is very much like ours. It's training, leadership development, professional development, combined with lobbying uh, work and, and, and advocacy work. They've been in existence for over 100 years. Uh, and they're very much focused um, on workforce development activities, which is why they approached us about co-locating with them and then looking at an affiliation. 
uh, because in our area alone, among these manufacturers, there are probably as many as 200 uh, high-skilled welding jobs that can't be filled. We've got manufacturing companies in this region that can't take new business on because they don't know that they're going to be able to get the skilled employees to come in and, and, and do the work. Um, so that's the focus of that. And, and, and to me, that's kind of a new next page for CNY SBA. Well, I, I happen to be part of the board when we wrapped up the last time. And that's what we're going through some serious budget issues. And what the board weighed was, well, we belong to the New York State School Board. We're paying a fee to them. Do we need to belong to both? And I don't remember what the discussion was, why we opted to say with them to drop out the viewers. But that's basically what happened back then. So. I would say the primary difference between the two, and, and, and I would in no sh way, shape, or form diss the New York State School Board's association. But I think what you've got to remember is that, particularly if you have to make a choice, uh, you know, I talk about equitable distribution of state aid. I talk about high need, low wealth districts. That's primarily what we have in this region. NISBA, on a statewide perspective, also has to represent all of those very wealthy districts down on Long Island and in the, in the, in the bedroom uh, counties uh, around, around New York City. Really so, not duplicated services. Yeah, I mean, they're, and they're not going to be, you know, and again, I don't want to speak for them, I and mean, I'm not trying to no. diss them, but we're more focused on that key issue for our school districts up here than they could be because they have to they have to make those members happy mm -hmm. as well. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Don? I'll be brief because I, I, I won't take my, my three minutes if that's what I'm allotted. Uh, my name is Don Neubauer. I'm president of the board of CNY. I'm also president of the Fabius Pompey School Board. Fifteen years ago, we had a, uh, we had a pretty bad budget issue ourselves, and we said we got to cut everything, and we cut out CNY for a year. But <clears throat> in not being involved for a year, one of the things, I mean, we're required as school board members to have certain trainings, and that gets ramped up all the time. Um, Tom, you went through the program, and you can do a lot of the trainings online. You sit in front of your computer, you punch the button, you put accept, and you get the certificate. What did you get out of that compared to what you got out of sitting in a room going through the program and the process with other people and having the opportunity to learn with other people and grow that way? So I, I think that's what CNY did for me. It, it showed you can go through these programs in a way that you're going through with people, not a computer screen. And that was very valuable. Charlie's put some great programs together over the last few years. It used to be only for board presidents, and we said that doesn't make any sense, it's for everybody. So any board member can come to those programs, and they're great opportunities for leadership, great opportunities to learn, great opportunities to find out how other boards do things. You know, whether it's uh, how often you buy a bus or how often do you do anything. There, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of camaraderie in the room, there's a lot of opportunity to share thoughts, share opportunities, I guess. So. Um, CNY is different from NISBA. They, they do do different things, and um, they both have their place. And I, I would say that on our board, we decided we couldn't choose, and they, they both had a place, and we're, we're members of both boards. Okay. Um, I think that's it. I, questions, or we're good. Thanks for your time. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Okay. It was very helpful. Um, I, I appreciate all the insight that you gave us because uh, I think a lot of the points you brought up was good. I know Jim and I did our yeah. training. <coughs> Through you guys before we I, dropped well, out. What you guys think? And it, and it was oh, amazing. It was fantastic. I mean, it's, yeah. To have the face to face, the ability to network, to all the things you just listed, be able to, you know, talk to other districts, see how they're doing things. Um, you know, there's no need to reinvent the wheel in, in, in any stage of the game. In, in so it's cases, great true, to have true. that camaraderie, um, the networking, the knowledge, mm -hmm. those relationships, and the fact that you all are local and you have the, you know, the best interest of schools. Anything you run into. Hours. You know, somebody else has probably dealt with it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Somebody else has dealt so with it before. That to me is, uh, is yeah. hugely advantageous yeah. to be um, part right. of it. Last thing I, I would offer is I'll, I'll send, maybe I'll send you my uh, email. And if you have any questions for any board members, you want to just email a question to me that way. I'd be happy to talk to you further. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank okay. Thanks, Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks a lot for your time. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Next on the agenda is the Board of Education proposed board policies. There's seven board policies that is coming to the board for the first time for approval. 
it will come to the next meeting as a second and final uh, reading if the board approves. Uh, one is bill meal charging against meal shaming policy, smoking tobacco use, records management, diploma and credential options for students with disabilities, alcohol, tobacco, drugs, and other substances, accidents and medical emergencies, and due process complaints, election, and board appointment of impartial hearing officers. Would there be any discussion? Amy, are these policies that were sent to us by Mary Wilson to recommend change? Yeah. What, what was change was language? Or? Most of it was language, I would say. There wasn't anything that was... No, and it's nice when we do the, when we go to the meetings, they have, um, you know, you can see what was taken out and what was added in. And, and it was nothing, I would say, that there was, like, they added babies, babies, right. yeah, they did bring things out, out okay. things like that. Just and those changes are attached to their resolution. Yeah. 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 Well, I do just want to avoid reading. Highlight, <laughs> highlight additions and we'll deletions and five color. Yeah. yeah. And then, it, and actually, kind of to your point with that, if, if they were uh, recommended by um, Gary, what we decided in the um, policy meeting was that we were going to have, you know, quarterly slated dates for our meetings in order to ensure that we met on a regular basis, rather than, you know, we get caught, you know, with with the regular business and then we don't meet. Um, with also the uh, understanding that if at any point a board member thought, geez, policy such and such seems like it doesn't really fit what we're wanting, that you could bring that to Kathleen, uh, myself, or Brandon, and then that would be a, a special meeting where we would discuss that particular policy. Well, I would think it's the one the policy committee meets you, something jumps out, you would, you folks would pick up on that, and you would enforce But that's only for the ones that Erie presents. I'm saying, like, if you're reading through Some of our, something some of else, maybe in, like, within board governance, and you're like, uh, wouldn't it be better if this was maybe okay. outlined a little better? Then you could bring that to us, and then, then that would be a part of it okay. that we would look at. Dean, can you explain to um, Tom? Had a question on how yeah. these how these these policy changes are generated. Yeah, so they come from we outside. subcontract from Erie One Voices, <coughs> mm -hmm. and they have a team of uh, a policy team, uh, policy makers, attorneys, and we contract with them to do our policy review. And so based on maybe. Uh, change in legislation or a change in current practice. They submit periodically um, recommendations for policies to us for us to review and bring through the policy review process. Several years ago, when we contracted to Erie One, we did a full policy review where there was a committee, Mary Beth Fierro, Brian Hartwell and I, uh, with the current superintendent and cabinet level administrators, read and made recommendations for every policy. Then they went to their data bank for policies for Oswego, and now they review them periodically based on current practice and regulation, and they send them to us for review periodically. So they're experts in policy and legal, and they make recommendations to us. Okay. And then we uh, review them, either accept them, maybe make some other additions if we'd like, we can send additional recommendations to them for consideration and feedback. Okay, so then it would come with our policy board, then you yep. our committee. You what know, happens is, this, yep. go through all of this. Okay. Have you seen this already, or this is? Yes, yeah. we had a meeting on Tuesday, so we went through all of these um, okay. and talked about them, talked about the differences. If there were policies, and the other thing he does is he sends them to if it's a, if it's something that, to deal with busing, he sends it to Nancy and um, to Tom. Okay. If it was something that had to do with elementary programming, you might ask elementary principals. When we did the full policy review, that's why we had a comprehensive team of middle, high, and elementary to get all the different perspectives. Um, then, it, then cabinet level administrators come together. We review and, and pour over these policies. And when we're at a place where we're comfortable, then we call a policy committee meeting, which is the one that we just had that Amy referenced. And then when policy committee is comfortable with the changes, emissions, and uh, additions, redactions, then we bring it to you guys for a first and second reading and adoption. Okay. So we won't make anything now. We'll wait until it's brought to the committee. It'll, no, it, no, no, no. This, 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 this is, is it. Oh, yeah. Great. So first so, time. Oh, these but, are brought yeah. to you for your first reading, and in two weeks they'll come to you for approval. And, and these are, these are, like he just pointed out, the ones that 
I guess the best way to describe it is like the, when Erie looks at these, they're looking at things that, like on a, in a bigger picture, like if something changes, where there's some policies that are specific to our district based on how the board wants the school district to be run. For example, the policy that we just changed a couple weeks ago. That it was it had nothing to do with Erie. That had to do with the board deciding how they wanted to. So at any point, if you or you or if any of us thought, you know what, we should look at such and such policy, how we do whatever that process is, and we want to change it, it doesn't have to come from Erie because it comes from the board. Understood. I just want to know relative to these particular policies and yeah. right. particular the verbiage on it that I was going to refer to. But yeah. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. It is the same process, though. It's the two step. Yes, the same, the same, the same, same exact process. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 There's one. <laughs> there's one hard copy in the superintendent's office. You need it under glass. It's electronically on board docs. Also. Yeah, I don't know the Yeah, because I, I think actually, speaking of policies, I think the policy on policy says that every school member is school board member is supposed to be provided with a copy of the policies, a hard copy, as well as it's supposed to be. I think in the superintendent's office, the library, there was like three locations. So, just. Be aware. That's what the you want us to is. print those for you all? So, but that's something that, again, as that's the board, we say is that a policy that we need to change. That's what I'm saying. There's a lot of things out there that people haven't taken the time to read. Right. I was just wondering the procedure in terms of making right. that. No. And, and that being said, now's the time if anybody on the board, because policy committee is only three people on right. the board. No one person has more authority than another person on this board. And so, those that committee making that decision doesn't mean that you guys are out of it. Oh, right? no, 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 it's you still, right? you're, you're the ones with advisory, right? right. right. You bring right. it to us, right? right. 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 No, yeah. I just think it's, it's yes. important to remember and yeah. keep that in mind, right? Yeah, sure. The committee is well, less the committee to oversee it, it's they're not making the decision. And I think that 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 exactly goes exactly to my point when we did the reorganizational meeting that I said with our committees, we should have, and we'll, we'll get to this later on when. Um, I address this that we should have committee chairs for each one of our committees that reports back to the board so that if we did say Brian said I have a could we could the policy committee look at such and such policy then we would do the legwork look at it you know come up with the rewording and then say Kathleen was the chair of the policy committee she would um, this first reading like instead of just having them listed here she would be able to say Brian brought up such and such policy these are the ways that we talked about changing it then we can have board discussion, and then it would come back for the second reading. That's how that that would play out, and that's why I think we need to have committee chairs because that's the point of having a committee to brief the rest of the board. Well, I'm just quickly looking before we leave. Quickly looking at one of these, uh, the language has changed. It's in red and has a line drawn through it, mm -hmm. and then there's some printing in black that was existing in black and then in blue because the blue I assume is blue. New edition. Yeah, black is the total black policy. Was right. Was it? Yeah. Yep. And the blue is what's recommended. Yeah, red You're colorblind. Is... You can't. Well, I can tell red from blue. <laughs> Could be purple and green, but let's go with it. The red is yeah. reda recommended redaction or, or okay. deletion. Okay. And then the blue, blue is, is new a language. new addition to yep. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Could I have a motion, please? Yeah. Oh, okay. Second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Next on the agenda is the superintendent's report, Dr. Hewa. Okay. Um, two things tonight. Um, first, well, it's a couple of things. Um, we already talked a little bit about the progress of Soda High School with our mini capital project. We're making great progress. And as we talked about earlier, we're going to have an opportunity to tour that so that the board can see the changes that have been made not only to the NOC which is the hub of our technology, but also the new single point of entry and the new configuration of the new main office. Um, also wanted to point out that this Thursday and Friday is the annual administrative retreat. Again, we're being hosted at SUNY Oswego at no cost, which is a great partnership that we created a couple years ago with them. Um, but then, and then the next two items, one, first, we've invited Nancy Stereo to come in um, I asked Heidi to reach out to Nancy. We've talked a little bit about our relationship with the city and how some of the civil service things funnel through the city and the responsibility that we have to have a relationship between our HR department and um, 
Nancy, for those of you that don't know, Nancy is the director of personnel for the city of Oswego. Uh, Nancy, thank you. Thank you for asking me. Um, and I want to first start by saying um, Heidi and I have probably the best working relationship of any personnel director I've had since I've been involved in personnel. So I really appreciate that. Um, we bounce other ideas off each other all the time. We have conversations all the time. Um, but one of the things she asked me to talk about is apparently there was some discussion and concerns about why it takes so long to develop job descriptions and things like that. You might have an idea that you want to hire somebody for a specific position. It then becomes my responsibility to get that into job description form so that it passes muster and it's fair and can be a competitive examination. So when you say go hire, <laughs> I'm, I'm well, lost. An athletic lost trainer is coming well, on. The, tonight. Right, the athletic trainer is coming on tonight. There's a process that we go through to look at what what do you really want that person to do? How do you want them to perform? What job functions are they going to be responsible for? Then are there certain skills and knowledges that you want them to have? And finally, what do you want them to know? What kind of education do you expect them to have before they come in and start working for you? All of that takes time, conversations back and forth. And sometimes it's not just between Heidi and I. Heidi has people she has to go back to and say, you know, I know we've had conversations with Nancy Squires and Carrie, I think we've had some with you too, where Nancy reaches out and says, or Heidi, I'm sorry, reaches out to Nancy and says, Nancy, Nancy Stereo said we need to look at this. I'm just trying to make it as easy as possible for you guys. We try and, I mean, we talk all the time. So. I try to keep things moving as smoothly as possible. But one of the, I have responsibility besides the city school district. I'm responsible for the civil service administration, not only for the school district, but also for the city, port authority, and the library board. And we used to have the housing authority board until we this day. So there's a lot, plus I'm also labor relations with five unions for the city. So. If you don't think I'm that busy, <laughs> try and get, try and come see me. You know, it gets a bit crazy. So I just want you to know, we're, it's not like I Heidi calls me and says, why do you, you know, I need this, and we do work very well. But you can say hire an athletic trainer. It's not just that simple. It's you know, there's a process behind it. You know, we have to put all the information together so that we can make sure. You're going to get a good qualified candidate when it's presented to you. Is what you say? Is there a typical timeline? Like, would it typically yeah. take some, or it, it just just truly depends on how quickly someone takes the time to fill out. There's a form. It's called a new position duty statement that you list. I want them to count pencils. I want them to count paper clips. I want them to so you I know prepare the budget. I want you know you list everything you want them to do, and then. You have to stop and think, are they going to supervise somebody? Who's going to supervise them? All of that. And then once I get it, I look at it, and I have to have it make sense, because then I've got to think about putting it together and submitting it to New York State Civil Service, and they'll say to me, yeah, we're going to test for this. Right. Um, I, well, I guess, I guess I'm just like thinking as far as like uh, creating a like, you know, streamlined process. If there was anything that we could do on our end, to expedite that process, like knowing what you just said, that there's forms that need to be filled out, and if there were the certain positions you know, that could it could be done ahead of time or something along those. I, I mean, I don't know this, but I'm asking. Me, like, oh, that's okay. No. Um, as soon as you know you're thinking about a job, mm -hmm. you get it to Heidi, right? Because she knows how the process starts and how it works, mm -hmm. and she will work with whoever it's going to be. You know, whether it's somebody in Nancy's office or the superintendent's office or you know, transportation, the athletic department, wherever it is, she knows who she needs to go to to get answers. And she kind of now is getting to the point where she knows I anticipate questions I'm going to have. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been working so well together. She kind of doesn't have to second that to me. She goes, Nancy's going to want to know mm -hmm. this. So she knows before she calls me. Right. So we, we're we trying our best yeah. to streamline it. And we, you know, and, and if you've got something that you want done quickly, 
she tells me that. So I know I need to get on that and rearrange my priorities. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. And I hope that I, I don't want you to think that it was any no, I, it, oh, not at all. We talked all. about the idea that this is really a good time of the year whenever we have new board members who might not be familiar with what the civil service process is. Mm -hmm. um, that was kind of an overview of what maybe either a new job description, a new position, or um, I'm not sure if Rhonda is still over there. She and I worked extensively to update our athletic trainer position because it hadn't been updated in so long. We were fortunate that Michelle worked with us for a, a good number of years. but. Nancy could probably spend another amount of time talking about the testing process, how valid lists are generated, how that dictates who we can select and bring in for interviews, how you have to be reachable after you take an exam. You know, that's a whole other world within the CFCA. We can around. spend several hours just you thinking of things, asking questions, and you we have some kind of answer for you. I mean, this is. This is my travel group version of the civil city civil service rules. Mm -hmm. um, the one in my is a orange sugar binder, and there's notes and you know all sorts of things on it that you know there's just things that I never know what's going to get asked at any particular time. So I usually and I wasn't sure if you guys were going to have any questions or what. But you guys, even the board of education members, are mentioned in our civil service rules. Um, the teachers are mentioned in our civil service. There isn't anybody that's sitting at this table that isn't mentioned in our rules in one way or another. Um, so, in all of this, in case anybody's wondering, there is a section of civil service law that says the administration of civil service for school districts in cities falls to the city personnel director. Mm -hmm. It's section 17, if anybody wants to look at that. <laughs> Which is sometimes an odd relationship because you would think, well, why do we have to go ask anyone else if we can? hire um, a bus driver or a new clerical staff. But civil service law is yeah. an interesting it is, piece. It is. That is what we have to function It's under. only four or five books long. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else have any other questions or is there any other information? Thank you very if much. If you ever have any <laughs> questions, feed them to Heidi or Becky or you I, and they know how to get away from it. Oh, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Next on the agenda is the consent agenda. Minutes of the regular Board of Education meeting of July 10, 2018. Treasurer's Consolidated Report, June 2018. Monthly Budgetary Transfer Report, June 2018. Oswego Middle School Extra Classroom Activities Fund Report, June 2018. Oswego Middle School Extra Classroom Activities Fund Report, Annual Report, 2018-19. Oswego High School Extra Classroom Activities Fund Report, June 2018. Oswego High School Extra Classroom Activities Fund Report, Annual Report, 2016-17. And the Special Education Board Report. Is there any questions? Could I have a motion, please? Move it. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed. Next on the agenda is curriculum with Carrie Flex. A is the New York State textbook law. There are five textbooks looking to be approved for instructional use. Two of them are for uh, CBA, Mr. Brother Academy. Um, three are elementary math, uh, AIS, primary grade textbooks. Any questions for Carrie? Could I have a motion, please? Move it. And second? Right. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? E is for the 2018-19 mentoring program that uh, the board authorizes mentor stipends for the program. Um, this year we anticipate around 28 potential mentors. The mentors will um, are the folks that are paid, teachers that are paid to have a new teacher connected with them, they'll mentor them for an entire year. So each um, teacher receives a stipend to do that mentoring. Is there any questions? Yeah, I just, how you just said 21,000 come out of general budget for a bunch of money for that, or how do you pay for that? Um, I, well, out of the general fund. Yes. So, yeah. so it's budgeted in the general fund. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I just have a 
question. I, I remember talking about this last year. So do they, as far as like um, ensuring that what we're providing with the mentor program that it's uh, uh, the most beneficial it can be for our new teachers, and we talked about uh, whether or not there was like an exit survey where the mentor or mentees could give feedback. I know we talked about that. I don't know if that was anything that we did or where that discussion went. Um, the, the relationship with the mentor and mentee, you're asking if there's an exit. We have what's called an OCTA representative that is able to be um, in between the pairs if need be, so there's contact between the mentee or the, the OCTA rep or the mentor and the OCTA rep if there's a relationship that's not working out. So there's always a, a safe place to go to a person to talk to for that relationship. I think that's what you're asking. Well, yeah, that, that's part of it too. But I was just saying, as far as like what they felt, did they feel like it was a, um, uh, was it like a situation or a program that really helped to them, or was there something else that they would like to be added to the program? You know what I'm saying? Like get feedback to find out like how effective were they? Were the was the structure of the mentoring program? You know, because new teachers need a lot of help, and especially with you know the changing of our you know dynamics in our school system so I'm just saying like is there anything any way or any thoughts I guess from any of you as far as making sure that they're feeling that they're getting I guess that the help in the areas that they you know what I'm trying to say so I think just saying we're doing it let's get a response out correct. of what yes. what were the results of right an exit How survey they're yeah. commenting on this yes. yeah I think sure. that asking your opinion on the the value of, what, of, yeah. the, of our mentoring program is a is a great idea, right. as long as we're careful not to ask mentees to be evaluating their mentors. But no, in no, general, no. In I general what you're saying yeah, is the strengths, like, like these are the areas what else that are very use? helpful. Yeah. But well, why would it be helpful to be? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Have, mm -hmm. Just to make sure that we're really sure. helping them the best that we can. So, mm -hmm. yeah. get their feedback. Can I have a motion, please? Second? Second. Amy? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Next on the agenda is personnel with Dr. Sweeney. So before I start my personnel section, which, you know, we got to the double letters, <laughs> did you just say that out loud? <laughs> I just wanted to give a, a real big thanks to my clerical support staff. Patty, Samantha, and Morgan have worked so diligently over the last month. It's it's an enormous undertaking to put together the hirings that we do over the summer. Somebody asked me the other day how I was enjoying my summer vacation. And I said, well, the weather's beautiful, and uh, I do enjoy it, but it's certainly not a vacation. So big thanks to my ladies who work in our department. So a professional staff retirement. Upon the presentation and recommendation of Dr. Uy, superintendent of schools, I present that to Shirley Hadley is retiring, whereas Shirley Hadley has served the students and staff of this school district as an elementary and special education teacher for the period <coughs> September 1, 1999 to the present, and has been a most responsible, conscientious, and dedicated staff member in service to the school district. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the members of the Board of Education of the Oswego City School District hereby acknowledge the faithful service of Ms. Hadley upon accepting her resignation for the purpose of retirement, effective November 30, 2018, and we express our grateful appreciation to her. Any questions? Motion? Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? B, professional staff recommendation, administrative intern, K6, Diana Proano. Any questions? Motion? Move it. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? C, professional staff recommendation, resignations. Michael Howard, assistant modified football co coach, effective 719. Jenna Kozowski, teaching assistant at Riley, effective 82. And Emily Schutzo, special education teacher, Minetto, effective July 31st. Any questions? Motion? Second. Jim, second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? D, professional staff recommendation, discontinuation of probationary period. Corey Angelieri, teaching assistant at Minetto, effective June 30th. Any questions? Motion? Move it. Second? Second. 
All in favor? Aye. Opposed? E, professional staff recommendation, leaves of absence. Ashley Malkoff, elementary teacher at KPS for the 18-19 school year. She's taking a different teaching position with us. And Megan Parker, school counselor Minetto from 9-1 to 1-3-2019. <coughs> Any questions? Motion? Moving. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? F, probation, our professional staff recommendations, probationary. Abby Bukowski, library media specialist, Layton School, effective 9-1, tenure 9-1-22. Sarah Hard, English, OHS, effective 9-1, tenure 9-1-22. <coughs> Andrea Orioli, guidance counselor, Layton School, effective 9-1, tenure 9-1-22. And Amelia Ray, special education at the high school, effective 9-1, tenure 9-1-22. Be it further resolved that the probationary expiration date will depend on the individual teacher's APPR ratings, and therefore be it further resolved that to receive tenure, the individual must receive overall APPR ratings of effective or highly effective in at least three of the four preceding years, and therefore be it further resolved that if the teacher receives an ineffective composite or overall APPR rating in their final year of probation, they will not be eligible for tenure at that time. Any questions? Motion? Move it. Second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? G, professional staff recommendation, probationary for teaching assistants. Kimberly Schwalin, teaching assistant level one, Minetto. Sharon Darrow, teaching assistant level one, Minetto. And Nathan Hackett, also level one, Minetto. All effective 9 1 and all with a tenure due date of 9 1 22. Any questions? Motion? Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? H, professional staff recommendations, regular substitute teachers. Stephanie Dawson, literacy at Riley. Um, these are all for nine, uh, with the exception of one, Jessica Slate. 9-1 to 630. Robert Inzalaco, elementary education at Riley. Stephanie Kaiser, elementary education at Pichu Park. Stacy Lamana, teaching assistant level one at the high school. Katherine Robinson, Robert Robinson, Elementary Education, KPS. Jessica Slight, Elementary Education, uh, Pichu Park, and she has the effective date of 9 1 to 131, so it's the fall semester only. Heidi Williams, Elementary Education, K, uh, KPS, and Cheryl Wilson, Elementary Education, at Riley. Any questions? Motion? Move it. Second? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? I, professional staff recommendation to change in status. Suzanne May, teaching assistant level three at Minetto. She's going from a part-time to a full-time teaching assistant position. Any questions? Motion? Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So Jay, I just want to explain a little bit. Um, Amy had brought up the art team leader, co-team leader position, which was great, thank you very much. We found it uh, a little bit ago that we had Stacy Van Waldick's paperwork and we needed to pair it with Rebecca Woods. So that will come on the next board meeting when we'll put them together in the district, not otherwise. Oh, yeah, that's what I was, and, and, and with that, um, those other questions that I had asked, like yeah. as far as I know that team leaders were cut from, you know, the middle school and the high school, and I'm not even, don't even in my recollection, because that was before we were on the board, um, that of the ones that were cut, which ones have been, been, been brought back, and have there been any team leaders who um, were new, you know? So I had new creation. gone back and put together, I had emailed everybody, but I don't know if you all saw it, because it wasn't until um, this afternoon, but I put together some general information um, what I can probably do to make it a little bit more thorough is maybe write it as a transmittal and send it out to you all, and I'll go mm -hmm. over it with the cabinet and make sure that I'm not missing anybody. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Do, do you know offhand if there's any departments that don't have or, yeah. or areas that do not currently have a team yeah. leader? So I think you were kind of asking after the 2015-16 school year where we abolished right. almost all of the team leader yes. positions and what's come back since then. So. Um, 
We've been restoring or expanding some previously held positions as the funding was available and or buildings were able to fund it, like I was able to fund it at the high school for some of our uh, focus status money. Um, so you'd ask about some district-wide team leaders. Music and art have district-wide. We do not have a library team leader we used to have as a team leader for district-wide librarians. Um, we also have not restored foreign language and counseling. We've had some other team leader positions that have been absorbed within other people through restructuring, like a technology team leader, was, uh, those responsibilities were absorbed under Jane Sickens' umbrella. And there's some that were predating you know, quite a while ago, before the 1516 school year. So I wasn't sure how far back you'd like me to Oh, I, it was it was really just kind of just in that out of interest in general, just because yeah. it was something where else. were we? Yeah, where were yeah. we? And then, yeah. like, what did we reinstate? Um, and then, were there any uh, uh, new creations, like new where no. somebody said, like, oh, well, we've never had a team leader for this particular home yeah, career. So let's, yeah. you know, in addition to the ones that were cut and brought back. I guess. Yeah. No. The only one I can really think of that would fall into that, but in a very, but in a very different category, was the supervisor of school nurse health services. And we created, I created that a few years ago, and Christina Chamberlain came into that position. But other than that, I don't. And that's in the civil service unit, right? So there's right. separate language different. contractual about that. But I don't, I don't think of, and I couldn't think of any other ones that we. And there's no other, I mean, like, I guess just, like, thinking about, um, you know, the different departments and the different, uh, um, like, responsibilities that different departments have. And I certainly think that that having, like, having been a teacher, like, I, I get the need and, and the, the value in having having team leaders um, in order to align and, and share ideas and, and all that um, and, and to help, you know, carry the load and all that. But I wonder like in an area like possibly phys ed would that be with all of the you know the different schools and the different PE teachers and the different coaches and the you know just I in the it's different initiatives that are going on if that would ever it is so we did have years ago a team leader for physical education that was a K-12 and I was trying to think if it was between Brad Dates and Scott Sugar possibly when it was restructured and the position became the director of physical education and athletics, and that fell under that person's realm. Um, because the administrative degree also slightly changed around that time, so there's a little bit more of a focus on running of a department of physical education teachers as well as the athletic department. So I would say, <coughs> and I could go back and look, but I want to say it was ballpark 2000. It was a while ago, probably about a decade ago now. We had, it, at one point, we had a director of athletics. Mm -hmm. That was it. Yeah. And then we moved to director of physical education, health and athletics. Yes, that's right. It and did include health. And then when we broke away from the health, I do believe it was around 2009, there was some negotiation. I believe there's probably an MOA sitting there somewhere. Was. Yes. Because then we moved into um, a director of physical education, athletics, and we moved the supervision of health and nursing to principals. And so that's when we moved away There's from been a lot of fluctuation the team leader for physical education because it fell into a wider supervisory structure under the director of physical education and athletics. That's so, my best recollection. So then, so basically, I mean, using real people, so then like Rhonda, that's her, so she absorbed the job of what would have been a team leader underneath her Correct, because she oversees the physical education teachers as well. It was really just natural all those years ago to then have that be under that director's purview. Okay. So there's no benefit in, or need to have such a... I mean, it's always something to take another look at, mm -hmm. but right now, if you look at departments like... Physical education is a great example, actually, because our phys ed staff falls under the direct supervision of principals and the director of physical education and athletics. So a team leader for physical education would be just another level um, for a pretty small department. 
But it's not anything that can't could never be looked at again. Thank you. Yeah, well, it was just with all these, you know, reinstatements, mm -hmm. and then you know, you're here in this department, that department, and then I just started thinking in my head, well, what left? about? Yeah, is anyone left out who could benefit from having um, this position? So. I just want to remind you that you keep reading, talking about reinstating these positions. Come to cost with that. Yeah. Yeah. You've had to somehow fund it. Yeah. Sure. sure. Just think about that. And, and it's more difficult to just take one away than, yeah. than it is to take all of them away. Right. Are we, I don't think I presented Jay yet. No, no. okay. No. So I was going to ask if you have any specific questions, but I was going to maybe put all of the extra comp elementary positions together, if you don't mind. So that would be J is Riley, K is Riley, mm -hmm. L is Layton, M is KPS, N is KPS, O is Minetto, and then maybe we'll do those in the fall and then we'll do the secondary as well. Yeah. That's okay. J through O? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any questions about any of those? Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? P is extra comp for OHS. Q is OMS. R is OHS fall sports. S are fall sports volunteers. And then T is the OHS OMS winter sports group. There will be a couple more winter sports coming. It's not quite done. They uh, have some paperwork that needs to be submitted, but that's the bulk of it. Does anyone have any questions for that group? Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? You support staff recommendation, resignation. Samantha Cleveland is leading us effective 810. Samantha's done a wonderful this for us in a relatively short amount of time, but she was offered a fantastic opportunity that we continue to go and speak to her skill sets. Any questions? <coughs> Motion? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? B, support staff recommendation a leave of absence for Teresa Bertoliva, custodian at the middle school from July 30th to approximately October 22nd. Any questions? Motion? Could I have a motion? Any motion. Second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? W supports that recommendation temporary summer work for Janine Regan and account clerk typist at the high school. Any questions? Motion? Second. All in favor? Support staff recommendation, temporary part-time, Sandra Sunis, teacher aide part-time at Beach Park. Any questions? Motion? Move it. Second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Why? Support staff recommendation, probationary, Faith O'Brien, library clerk, she's the split high school, middle school, and Mackenzie Berber, library clerk at Lee. Discussion? Motion? Second? Second? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Z, um, you might wonder there's library clerks on Y and then there's library clerks on Z and the difference between probationary and provisional is some had already taken the exam and can be appointed directly into it and some will have to take the exam when it's offered. So Z is a support staff recommendation for provisional. Christina DeStevens, library clerk at Mitchell Park. Sherry Lawton, library clerk. She'll actually become our book room clerk at the high school. And Michael Schlichtig, our athletic trainer. Any discussion? How I, many? Go ahead. <laughs> how many applicants we had for the, uh, for the uh, training? Overall, five. Five. And I believe all five were approved by City Hall. I don't think we had anyone who applied who didn't meet our qualifications. It is the start date is tomorrow. 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 Oh, yes. <laughs> so, well, I, I'm very happy that, yeah. that we have one. Yes. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, it's 
There are only four applicants listed on the back of Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second? Second it. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And double A, our substitute and temporary employees. This is our annual renewal of all of our returning subs and new substitute teachers and tutors and all of our <laughs> Any questions? Hour. Motion? Move it. Second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Could I, Heidi, could I bother you to go back? I, I meant to ask something on um, uh, Diana, her position, which would be the, the, the elementary yes. administrative intern. Could you just explain that? So, we, Dr. New, I was interested in providing an opportunity for some of our teachers who have been working through administrative programs, and especially at the elementary level, it's a little difficult to schedule your day to get your administrative internship booked within the contractual day. Uh, secondary folks have a little bit easier of a time of scheduling their contacts and then leaving a chunk of time so that they can do their internship, and providing some additional support to our elementary schools. So th this was something that we had talked about during budget time, an internship at an elementary and secondary level. We're still working on finding a good candidate for the secondary level. But Diana is a great, great uh, veteran teacher coming to us from her position from Riley School. So she's very excited and we're very excited to have her. So, so the way that it works is then she no longer teaches in her current position. She takes this on as a full time, which then is the adjustment in salary and right? Is that um, She's actually, she stays within the OCTA bargaining unit. Yeah. So she just comes out of the classroom. That's, the salary comes from her teaching salary. Okay. And then we have replaced her for the school year with a regular substitute teacher. Okay. And the same thing will happen for the secondary? Yep. If we find a candidate. Okay. All right. We're still working on that. Yeah. I knew that's what it was, well. but I couldn't yeah. remember all the specifics of, because we've done it differently in the past. Yeah. So yeah, in the past, we, ha we haven't had full-time administrative interns no. in quite some time. Typically, our administrative interns are generated uh, through the building mm -hmm. by either Mary Bath or whoever the yeah. high school principal is this year is Pat. Um, we have another administrative intern that's doing an internship through that way. And that has no cost to the district because 7 through 12 has some additional flexibility in their ability to schedule. So they can free up someone for half the day and then some after before school. But we really were looking to create some leadership opportunities for those that were working on their leadership programs <coughs> and had an elementary focus. Mm -hmm. Diana is a perfect fit because she has a strong literacy background and she, in addition to working in all five elementary schools, can really work as a liaison in our new PK3 literacy initiative. Mm -hmm. And she's a, she's a great classroom reading teacher. So. Hopefully we find another secondary um, mm -hmm. intern to share between OMS and OHS. Thank you. Next on the agenda is finance with Nancy Squires. A is a contract with 401 Saratoga. This is for tutoring services for special education students um, that are um, inpatient treatment. There are hours for elementary and hours set aside for middle school and high school. Any questions? Motion? Moment. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Good. Opposed? <clears throat> B is the agreement with Leaf Inc. And this is to um, have Mike Ford come in for a one day retreat on September the 1st um, for professional development. Any questions? Motion? Moment. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Both C and D are our annual contracts that we bring to the board for approval for transportation. One is a contract for OC with OC and BOCES for $204. It's a really small contract. And the other one is a contract for with Durham School Services for um, $121,250. 
these two contracts have to be um, board approved and put into place with New York State at, prior to September 1st when the children start. Any questions? Yes, do we bid those contracts? Like, was there any competition out there? Or? They, we really don't because we provide most of the transportation services in-house with our own fleet. This is just for the runs where we don't have drivers and and it, they really do our, mostly our McKinney-Vinto and those kind of runs where we really can't create runs within our district. But there's no other provider out there that could bid? Uh, I mean, this guy raises in price $6,000 over last year. Uh, well, actually, he's the only show in town. I guess it'd be pretty much. There the are some other transportation services out there. There's one in Syracuse for a student, but it's really far out. We could bid for those. It would be time-consuming, and we know what we're getting with Durham. They know our students. They know our runs. So we really don't bid that out for that amount of dollars. And they and they're really great to work with in terms of if we have a change in one of our runs. So, Where's that out of they have a base in Manetta, yeah. Manetta, which is helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to ask. I mean, I, I see the $6,600 increase, but do we have an increase in demand on the students as mm -hmm. to what they will last year, as to what they're going to this year? Or is that always the same thing? It, our our um, student population varies from year to year, as well as where we're picking them up from and dropping them off. I get that, but are those specifications representative of his increase? Or is he just raising his price? Uh, I have to go back and look at the contract. Um, when Tom Gunn did all of the calculations, he provided these to me, so I haven't really had a chance to right. look at how he calculated the amount of what we would need. Right. But I know that in the past we have added additional runs to Durham, which would increase the pricing. No, just to speak to Sam's point, is it, hey, he raised it up, you know, it's great, and yeah, they go, hey, what's going on? Well, yeah. is it because we got more kids, or is it? Right. Nancy, do you know offhand if Durham is handling our transport for our P-TECH kids to OCC? That, or are we doing that in-house? I think that we are going to do that in-house. Because we're engaging in a partnership with other districts, but we're providing the transport, mm -hmm. so our kids will get picked up here for our for our, P our P10 kids that are going to spend a lot of time now this year at OCC. Mm -hmm. We're going to drive to Fulton, pick up Fulton kids at at the um, CCC campus, then move to Phoenix where Hannibal's going to bring their kids. So it's all. And the other schools will contribute to us, and we'll just. And then we go the back and yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thanks, it might be full. There are but the drop-off. We're, we're all funneling to, and we're and we're going to yeah. the drop-off point is full. Yeah. And then we're going to Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going back to ABW. But I, I just fancy just to follow up on Sam's question. So, like, as, as far as. In these in these instances, and, and I mean, I get it's sixty six hundred dollars, and you could say, oh, it's only six hundred or sixty six hundred dollars, but all those little dollars add up. So, um, when do you determine that it's worth the effort to do that, to put it out to bid? You know what I'm saying? So that to make sure that we're getting our best bang for our buck. Well, a lot of the time, Amy, what happens is there are additional runs put on. So it might not be just a cost increase from Durham. It might be that we are requesting additional services through Durham, which is increasing the price. I don't know all of the logistics yet. I haven't. I I don't have that in front of me to answer the question of why did it go up. Um, as Tom I said, right? yeah, Tom. I said yes. I'd go back yeah, and I'd yeah, get the information from Tom and provide him a transcript. Well, who wouldn't know that? It's you would. Right. And he knows the run. He knows and right, got right off the bat, we can assume that there's an increase in fuel cost. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because we know that's so that to be true. It's only it's five percent. Five percent. Could I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed. E is a memorandum of understanding between the school district and the Oswego County Correctional Facilities Incarcerated Youth Program. Any questions? Motion? 
Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? F is a contract with SBT team. This is Chris Sharkey. She provides additional training to transportation um, as well as some the Henrietta bus services and things like that. Any questions? The Mom? increase of 2500 there. What's that for? Tom is using her more for training for 19A. 19A, 19A is the um, the <coughs> designation that our drivers have to have in order to be compliant to drive. So they have to have so many hours of training every year and they have to do um, testing on all of our bus drivers yearly to make sure that they're still qualified to drive the bus. So that's not, that's a new thing or no. why, why are we paying to do something? We lost one of our 19A trainers. Can I have a motion please? Kathleen, second. Ryan, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? G is another memorandum, memorandum of uh, under agreement with SUNY Oswego, and this is for the Teen Sheldon Program Consortium. Any questions? Motion? Move it. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I, Tom, you said all in favor? I need everybody to time. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Opposed? Next. H is for a contract with Dr. David Karam um, as a behavioral consultant, and this is to support students uh, with behavioral difficulties. Any questions? Motion? Brian? Second? Second. Tom? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I is in, uh, in agreement with uh, SUNY and the school district, and this is for the Oswego Children's Project. It's a continuation of a program that we've had in the district for many years. Any questions? Motion? Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? J is for the board to approve um, the award of an athletic supply and equipment bid that we did in-house. Any discussion? Uh, motion? Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? K is for the board to accept a donation from Donors Choose to Minetto. Any? Um, it says Riley, but it's Minetto. Um, for $992.18 for four flower tables, and it was procured by Rachel Little. Any questions? Motion? Second? Second. Tom? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? L is for the acceptance of a grant from the Shinneman Foundation for $25,000. This is for Pitchu Park School for their continuation of the Leader in Me program. Any questions? Motion? Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? M is for the donation of Planet Fitness fitness equipment uh, valued at $103,321 um, to be used in the Oswego City High School. Any questions? Motion? Move it. Okay. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And it's to accept a donation from Pathfinder Bank for $2,716, and this is for um, shirts for the new student orientation at the high school. Yes. Any questions? Motion? Move. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next on the agenda is items from the board. Does the board have any items? I do. Uh, <laughs> I was very happy. Very happy. Very happy. Well, congratulations. Very happy to, uh, in short notice, 
um, city to put together a, uh, uh, a forum so that activities and different programs that are provided throughout the city of county that we can actually reach the schools because it's so hard to try to get superintendent's days or whatever to go on board some school bells and putting this all together. And Tony Asleo was the first, one of the first ones to RSVP. And we have a huge group do, of right? Huge. And, and Dean asked all the right questions too. He said, can I bring principals? Can I bring guidance counselors? Which was music to our ears that, you know, you want to provide programming. In many cases, that's free of charge for districts. Um, it's great to have schools on board and then to get staff there so that you don't have to go back and explain it all 50,000 times um, to the whole benefit. So, super excited that it's like a yes and that more of the new person are coming in. Yes. So, that was exciting. And that was a follow up from the it really, Yeah, from our college workshop. And it, what's great about it is it's something the superintendent's been asking for for a long time. Right. And Stu, for most, some of you that don't know, is a retired superintendent from our county. And he's doing a lot of liaison work now between agencies and superintendents. And he really is, has been a real dynamo. Because he has relationships with all the superintendents, so he can just call and say, hey, can you do this for me? Can you do that? Are you interested in this? And um, it should be great. Yeah. So that's August 16th. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> it was so enthusiastic. <laughs> I, I just have a couple things. Um, just a reminder that uh, for um, Oswego County School Board Association, the uh, Kudamaki tour is set for August 27th at 6 p.m. And if you're interested in going, um, Donna Blake, or you could just RSVP through me to, um, to let them know that you're going to be there. But it's a fantastic way to kind of see how the PTEC program works. Um, and the other thing I wanted to do was we needed to, uh, I guess, have closure on a couple things, and then that kind of like, like worked into another idea that uh, I had met with Dean to um, to propose to the rest of the board that to adjust certain parts of our agenda to be able to allow for certain. Um, I guess discussions and all that, so it would be on there, so that the administration would be prepared as well as board members to be able to add anything. Um, so I know that there's been a lot of times where people have asked a question and then maybe they got forgotten about the next meeting, and then they're you know, did you hear? Are you you know? So I thought again, in reaching out to other school board presidents and you know, just networking with people, a lot of them what they have on their agenda is unfinished business, and so where if you know Karen's taking the, the minutes and a question is asked, that then if it wasn't answered in the board meeting, it would then the next meeting go on to the unfinished business. And so then you all would know and we would know and then we would it would provide a, an avenue for closure so that it wasn't happening. Um, where people are feeling like their questions weren't answered. So um, that was one thing, and, uh, and and certainly, I mean, Dean and I are supposed to work together uh, in conjunction to create the agendas. Um, but this, I guess, is just a way to let you guys know before we go ahead and, and make any changes or to provide any feedback, so you can provide feedback as well. Um, and then the other things were um, we, um, just to speak to that. Yes, the board policy, the district policy on that is that the superintendent. That's the district policy. So that would be a policy that, like when we were talking about earlier, about um, what Erie provides for us and what the actual um, district does and how they conduct business. And I think that it makes, because kind of going off of that, there's also a policy, which I don't remember the exact number of it, but I could provide that with you, that says that if for under items for discussion at any point, I think it would be, I think I want to say it was the Wednesday, I don't remember exactly how the policy reads in our district, that that if a board member um, has an item for discussion, that they can give that to either the board president or the superintendent for it to be added to the agenda. So to my point of what I was just saying is, is just that, that if you had a question or you had a question or, hey, I'd like to talk about such and such at the board meeting, 
You're just they, a liaison uh, to correct. get it there. And then when Dean and I meet on the Friday before the board meeting to create the agenda, certainly I can't create what's going on in personnel. I can't, but I am your liaison. So if there's something that you want to have discussed at the board meeting, I can bring that to him when we sit down and have that meeting. So I guess what I'm asking for is that, you know, you all have the trust in the board president, whether it's me or whomever, that when we sit down and come up with the, the structure of the agenda, that we're doing it in the best interest of feedback from all of you, so that maybe adding an unfinished business because of feedback from board members frustrated with lack of closure, et cetera, or um, you know, items for discussion, like I just said, in line with the policy, that if there was something that people wanted to have a discussion, it would be listed on the agenda and not just stuck at the end for items from the board. And then that way, everybody would be prepared. And if there was, again, I, it, it, um, you know, I believe in the policy, there's another, there's, our, our district's policy covers stuff like this. The superintendent creates the policy, the, creates the agenda along with the executive and he reviews it with you. That's policy. And then the other I'm part, not aware of that policy at all. And I've read through. Um, and I know that when we went I to our- I can find it to you send it to you because it we, is in our district's policy. So we city school district's okay, policy. Okay, you can send it, that'd be great. I, because I, that I just think that it The should. other part of it is that there are line items on what has to be in the agenda. And that's exactly what we do. I think we cover it in the items from the board. So okay, if you have an unfinished all, question, that's all due people. respect, Kathleen. I'm speaking on behalf of board members who have been sitting here in frustrations with the way that the, the board agenda is set up and that there is oftentimes lack of closure. It's not a, I'm not pointing the finger at anybody. I'm just trying to do my job in, in answer to what certain board members have said. Geez, is there a way that we could have more discussion on fill in the blank, whatever. Well, to me, in talking with other school districts, and what I learned in, in board training, that the agenda is to be made in conjunction, the board president and the superintendent. So I'm not aware but of that's all. what NISBA says, that those are NISBA's recommendations. Our policy, our school district policy would supersede NISBA because that's an association. It's okay, so I'm not aware of such a policy, so you can certainly let me know. And if that is the I case, I believe it's 1501. My, excuse me? I believe it's 1501, policy 15. Troy, are you saying, Amy, that we remove the item from the board member uh, from the agenda and then use this new format? Well, well, so my idea was to do have unfinished business so that to, pro to provide an opportunity for everybody to be prepared so that rather than wait, okay, I don't know what he's going to talk about in items for, from the board. I don't know what anyone's going to bring up. Right. So if I have a question, a lot of times I go home and then I'm like, oh, geez, I should have thought about whatever. Where I'm saying if we do it this way, certain things are there and we know and then that may spark an idea in another board member's head to be like oh i'm going to ask a question about such and such or whatever i'm just saying it's more organized and more transparent that we're all bringing so you all are prepared and we all are prepared to be able to have but it's not, a, it's a not conversation be cool because if, if you bring up something and we start talking about it then all of a sudden oh i bring something to my mind too but i'm not on the agenda to talk about it you just knock that off my head but, but that would be the section where a lot of school districts have it's called items for discussion. So if you said, I'd That's like items to, from the board. What's the you're talking to me? That's, that's the difference between. She's talking because about we this don't write it down in, in the, the agenda, party. Kathleen. It's right. just people just bring it up. I'm saying right. having it. I meet with Dean. You guys say to me, I'd like to talk about so such then, and such. If, but if you and have it it would be written up. if there's a question, then items from the board, you bring it up. That's what you do every week. But what I, I think. I don't know. I think what she's saying is that it would come out in our like our Friday agendas, so that if there was some sort of topic that we'd have a little bit of time to marinate on it and propose whatever questions. Right. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. That it would be literally just like when right. you look at these things. It tells you what 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 it is we're looking at, and we get the backup and all that. And my proposal is to do what a lot of other school districts do, and they have again, like we just said, when Central New York School Board reps were here. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel. And when other people exactly. and other I guess schools that's my point, are- is you're trying to reinvent the wheel when there's items from the board. At the last meeting we discussed, if you have a question for Heidi or Carrie or Nancy, sending those emails out, 
with questions, your potential questions that you're going to ask. But we can't, but we can't have so, a conversation on email. So, so think, it still has to happen. Right. Yeah. So let me, right. let me so just So they're putting it. it out there. Let me just say it. And then it's up to you as a board member to bring it to the table. If there is a policy out there, we can review it. The board has the option to change the policy if they choose to. We can look at the policy if we want to add language to it, remove language to it. We have the ability to be able to do that. If this is something that the uh, that we want to add, then we can add. But let's look at the policy that's out there and go from there. And you can sit and debate it all day long, whether or not. I, I get it. It's it's good. It adds structure. It closes the loop on things, which sometimes we don't always close the loop on things. There's nothing wrong with having something out there that dots the I's and crosses the T's. Policies are there, and obviously we've gone through policies in the last couple of meetings that we've made changes to. So this is just another example of how you want to look at the current policy. If it needs to be changed, it can be changed. Right, and I'm just saying my understanding of it is that it's already on there as items from the board if you're changing those items. No, well, it's, it's just the idea of being aware of those items from past, from past exactly. things that people are going to speak to them. So if we just added one more thing, old business, new business, for a discussion, right. that would take care of that. We'd bring those up and yep. lay those down Absolutely. on the floor, and then we'd still have items at the board at the end because anything new comes up. If right. that is open-ended, it goes to old business, new exactly. business so exactly. for a discussion. So it would just be one item yeah. that we could yep. handle that way. It's right. closing the loop and adding some structure, and, and right. it's a good thing. And, and, and the only other thing that I was thinking along that lines is, is that to also have, um, speaking to the point of the committees, and that we should have a committee chair who does the reporting back. So that have a section in there for the committee chair reports. And I brought up last year, I, do we have a student rep? What kind I'm sorry, of student rep. rep. I'm still trying to get a hold of her, Amy. Um, okay. She's the president of student um, council. I can't remember, at least. Uh, and um, I still haven't got a hold of her, but I'll keep trying. Okay, because the other thing too, and I brought this up at the last board meeting, I think to provide them with an opportunity to speak on behalf of the student population, I think it's a great opportunity to provide them, and again, a lot of other school districts provide that opportunity they, they for their always, students. Student rep is always had an opportunity every board meeting, and some of them, they're both depending on basically on the school. Some want to speak up and get involved in the conversation. I thought Sasha was in there, some don't. Right. So, I just, some I just show up religiously every week, and attention. some don't show up at all. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, that's the was another idea. It was just again a structured outline to so they know, like we all talk. We're grown adults, and there have been board members who've been like, "When am I allowed to talk?" And I'm sure a you know 16, 17 year old kid is thinking the same thing. So, I think if we provide mm -hmm. them that, and they can say, "I don't have anything today," or they can say, "Hey, I went to such and such, and it was great," and <coughs> blah 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 blah, whatever. But we are structurally providing them an opportunity to speak, I think is a good idea. Um, in the past, I have, I have mentioned to the board of the group you know, you are, you are an active participant uh, of this board, you can't vote, you can take part in the discussion. So if you want to weigh in at any time, please do. Mm -hmm. You can tell them that right up front. Right. And, and some do. Some right. I remember Jill and Morgan did a couple of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They were very active. Right. John, I, I'm just saying, John, like, it's oh. a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you can. I was just wondering if you're going to be following the same structure where the first meeting of the month would be committee meetings and then those items would be discussed and then placed on the next meeting, yeah. the second meeting of the month. I know right now it's kind of crunch time Did trying to get ready for school. Remember last year the board decided to change that structure because we were having a lot of discussion at the beginning of the month and then the second agenda, the meeting on the second. Uh, meeting of the month, there wasn't a lot of discussion because the committee structure sort of, it got, there was so much business of the district to operate that we were finding that we were asking the board to act on items during the committee meeting, which was the first meeting of the month. And so the things that would normally have been pushed to the second meeting for approval had already been approved. So okay, I didn't realize um, it was But there has been a little conversation so. about whether that, is that something we want to revisit or not. I would love to revisit I just I think the way that that was done was extremely efficient, and we weren't we didn't end up having two and a half three hour meetings, and we still we still got our discussions in, but we weren't sitting here for three hours. Okay, so the so the um, so my next thing would be the committee chairs. Can we can we 
for the committees to be the, like I said, for policy. It's What's the purpose of the committee chair? Well, the purpose of a committee is to do the legwork behind doors to exactly your point, to save time on the board meeting. So then if, for example, with facilities, they meet on a regular basis, in, of which we almost never get the information of what goes on. So in any board I've ever sat on, that's the point of a committee, is that they do the legwork, and then they have a, you know, five minute slot of time to be able to brief the board and say, this is our meeting, these are the highlights, boom, you move so on. So you're talking about doing this meeting, not be an email or any other? Well, it can't, everything has to be, but we can't. The policy committee naturally does that right. already. So you would be, we're really, we're really talking about facilities. Yeah, right, that's really what it's saying. Right, right. Especially now, right. just because we have a project and a pending. Well, no, and also project. the audit committee as well, because if they need, they need to have a rep sure. who's, who's able to speak on behalf of the committee who's met with the auditor yeah. to be able to speak. So, um, does that and, make and more sense to have Nancy be, I mean, that she facilitates those meetings. Why wouldn't you just have her facilitate that? I guess because it's a board committee. Yeah, it, when she and she gets in the weeds and what what problems? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean she's down to the down to the numbers and she knows what's going on and all that. You know what we could present would be ideas, thoughts, right. compromises, different things that are going. To, you know, oh, yeah, that, that. it's a basic summer. It's all it is is you're doing the you're briefing the board on what happened in the meeting of only three people and bringing everybody quickly up to speed. And again, by nature, some of them already happen, but. See, I guess the way I look at that is it just seems very divisive that, that you're putting it on one person and not the other, and then you know, maybe with other people on the committee can't contribute, don't feel like they have the opportunity to contribute because they're not the chair of the so the board meeting. I and I go back to. You're just talking about making like a presentation to the yeah. board meeting, right? Yeah. Just a chat. But yeah, it's, it's just, just a like, casual hey, so what's going conversation. It's going to be the whole facility. Right, but that's, the that's what I'm saying. The, the whole, I want to hear from the whole facility meeting. I want to hear from you. You're on the facility. Yeah. I want to hear what you got out of it. I want to hear what right. you got out of it. I don't want to just hear from one person's perspective. That's why we're seven people. Well, you just said you don't want three hour board meetings. This was, I guess, an effort of trying to say, if they're all at a meeting, they're all collectively there, and then one person's the representative who says, hey, this is what we talked about. If, if you and Brandon and I are on policy, Amy, I don't want three hour board meetings. We did it this way before, and it worked. And we had some meetings for 45 minutes to an hour. So it's not like it hasn't been done. It can be done. I, I don't understand the pushback on this. I think it's really. Because I want to hear from seven people. Seven people were elected for this. But there's You're not seven people on the committee. Seven. There's three people on the committee. I get that. But I want to hear from all three people. And they can talk. If, if then that's like, the point in handing a chair. In order to provide, again, like I said, a, a spot in the board meeting where we know something is going to happen, that we know the committees are going to report back to the rest of the board. Because I can't tell you how many times everybody walked out and they were like, well, what happened in the such and such meeting? It, I'm just saying it's just a way to create organization. Can I make a suggestion? Yes. That we just put the slot in there. It's exactly. a picture from the committee. Yeah. Whoever's here will speak to it. If you feel, Jim, we can speak to it as a collective, but we'll make it as, as concise as possible. It's going to be a couple minutes. We'll speak to the issue and, and we'll go on. But I just, as long as, again, it's an item that you want to hear because we can, I think, any of the three of us will be able to bring you up to speed, you know, relative to where we've been so far with our, our meetings. But just so. do the facility spot. Yeah. And then if Jim, instead of say Jim, does that I, That's that fine. I just go? feel like this is a game of semantics. I, this is I agree. Absolutely exactly. But if this gets us through it, through this is crazy. Every, 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 so far, every, when you're saying, everything I have suggested, you have shut down for reasons that are absolutely unknown to me. I don't understand what is going on here. This, I feel like I'm in the twilight zone, to be completely honest. This is ridiculous. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm done opinion. with that. That's, that's your opinion, opinion, and that's great. And but your opinion that has to continually to be against what I say is getting old. Were two and this is only there meeting were two what? Things. There were two things that I suggested. Well, it, it's that already made too, too many, too many, too much argument <clears throat> push back right now. It is, uh, to be completely honest. I'm this, sorry. That we should be able to work together. And this is semantics. What you just offered was hardly any different than what I just said. And then you shook your head and say, oh, that's a great idea. Like, I don't get that. 
But what happens? It was we'll agree to disagree. Said. It was said by a different person, that's why. Just be honest. What Pat said is the same thing Kathleen was saying. That all three members of the committee speak. Is that what you said? Well, I said, well, you know, if you want to make it more concise, we decide. If you want to speak, you'll speak to it. I'll speak to whatever. If Jim's not here, you're going to take it. Whatever. Well, we can make it as concise and get to that point, but the idea of a chair, it's an extra layer. I don't think we need it. If we want to do it, we can. I don't think it's divisive to what you're saying, Kathleen. I think we can, we can just sort it out. I think the idea of having it there for a line, that's great, because we can communicate everything we know to everybody else here and as the project moves along. And in this particular project. Yes, yeah. no ground. Done. That's the way it's going to be. So I just, I have a couple more things here. So can the. Can I just go back to a couple of weeks to wrap them up before yeah. we move on? Yeah. Because if it's going to affect the agenda, we, we need to know it. So I, you mentioned unfinished business. I didn't hear, I didn't hear a directive on that from everybody. What, what's the consensus on that? The second one I want to make sure that we have some directive on so that we can um, start to restructure how the meeting's coming forward. Is there an interest in the board of going back to the committee system? That's the second one. That is, there's been some, I don't think we wrapped around that one. And, and, and where are we with items for discussion? Do we decide that's the same as unfinished business? Unfinished or are they two separate? Two separate. Okay. Unfinished Changes. business would be the unanswered questions. An item for discussion would be if someone thought of just exactly what it is. Something that we should right. discuss. So the, so the unfinished business. And maybe there's be, nothing on there. That's it's right. just a if, spot if on the was, agenda that creates there was information left over, it goes on the primary Correct. agenda and it gets pushed out. So if somebody had, for example, if we had, we had the perspective that there was some unfinished business, we at meeting cabinet, would you, are you saying you want us to hold that for the next meeting to talk about it? Do you want us to funnel information as we get it like we currently do? And then if we don't, then I, I, I just want I to be clear. I, I think well, unfinished business is to, to, to talk to, hey, have we done those exit surveys on the mentoring program? Right. Well, we talked about it, but we weren't real yeah. sure. We don't have all the information. Because right. again, we're, this is if I have the information, there's more we people be, or is it just it brought up, we should so be answering So the information it that's brought back to, to us at the next meeting, right. Nancy's going to be reminded of it. I'll be reminded so I don't right. forget that I asked her, is exactly. it more people or just more money? So who generates the unfinished business agenda portion of the meeting? And who generates the items for discussion portion of the meeting? I think the items for discussion would be if a board member or an admin administrator had something that they could either bring it to you or bring it to me and say, hey, could you add this to the agenda? And then it gets added to the agenda. What about the unfinished I think that when that when Karen down. takes the minutes, yeah. if a question exactly. is asked, like well, I asked Carrie, is. just like to your your example, Two weeks, well, here. then you would say that would go on there. And then, OK, let's close the loop. Did we decide to do that? Are we going to do that? Where did it go from here? And then so if we way, decided to respond quickly and get your information, we might just reference this is some unfinished business that you asked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And it wouldn't yeah. have to be talked about. Yeah, right. I think I think without killing us, a good example was Nancy. Nancy was going to provide some people want to see the capital project. What else was in there? So Nancy right. said, I can get that for you. Right. So that might be in there saying capital project, whatever. Right. So that. That's it's there. Like, so two weeks from now, we're all like, oh, yeah, that's how you're going to get it. Yeah, and then you, you forget about it. Right. And then right. the time goes by, and then we're like, oh, geez, we should have asked for it. It's like it checks and balances. Then we know, check off, we got it. We got the information. Yeah, yeah but came right. that, Nancy's going to get that to us as soon as you have it. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be on that unfinished business thing because we're going to get it ahead of time. I don't want it in two weeks when I'm sitting in a board meeting. Right. Well, that would be I great if it goes time. away. That would be great. If it goes away, then we'd be crossing off the list. But if it happens to still be on the answer, on the Friday before the next meeting there, then I guess it's it still would, sitting there. I guess it wouldn't the, make the list unless I requested it. So if I already had it, I wouldn't request it. Right. But if it was next two weeks from now, I still didn't have it, I'd say, hey, what about that agenda so, or the capital project? We need to get that. So that might be on the list. Or even, I mean, because really, what, if, what would the big if deal be? If it was answered, it, it doesn't need to be on the list. Right. So if I, if I was talking to Nancy, she said to me, and I don't know. Right. And I, I guess other? the other thing too is it, it, even if it was listed on there, if there was, if it did say unfinished, and then at the board meeting it would be that that information was provided. Check. You see what I'm saying? Then it's 
just done and we've checks and balances and we've come closer. So that's that. Uh, the last, uh, I just have two more things. The, I know that I brought up before, um, I had reached out in efforts trying to, um, to, to meet with Jamie in, in a way to uh, enhance just our Board of Ed webpage to have additional information on there. Again, based on um, seeing what other school districts did, one of them in, in particular was Fayetteville Manlius who, who pulled their, um, their entire community and said, what would you like to see on your webpage? Like on our webpage, on the entire school district. And it was 100% feedback from the community members, which I thought was great. And if you go to Fayetteville Manlius's webpage, it's awesome. It's very interactive. Clientele live in the New York, right? The same people live in the So you go ahead and pull. I don't understand what the point is there because I uh, all I'm saying is that. Just what I'm saying. Well, I, I think that people in Oswego would like to know the same type of information that people in Fayetteville Manly as well. I don't know what the differences are, so are. Go ahead and pull. I'm not trying to do a poll. What I, what my idea was, was going back to what I suggested at the last board meeting. That if we had a community, which would be an ad hoc committee, a community relations committee that would be made up of two to three board members, we could have a district representation, whether it was a principal or teachers or whatever, parent, business leaders, and have them come up with ideas. And again, you'd have a, a chair or a spokesperson who after doing the legwork and whether it was um, enhancing our Board of Education webpage, just that page, um, or doing exit surveys, poll surveys, which we've talked about and we've never done them, to come up with questions for that, um, to do, you know, have this group figure out um, from, you know, from talking to the public or whatever, everybody bringing their own, own insight, like what sorts of information or correspondence would be most beneficial for them, not only on a day-to-day -day basis for information, but also for things like the capital project. And, and this committee would do that legwork to come up with the ideas, to come up with the formats, and then that chairperson would come back to the board and say, these are all the things we came up with. So, and along with that would be because what I wanted to meet with Jamie about was I wanted him to be able to provide those links to show you guys like what you know so and so's um, you know B bills uh, board of education page look like or whatever just so you could see the differences of what information is out there because me to saying this and you've never been there and you don't know what I'm talking about so that's what I had um, reached out to him um, to, to try to do so but that would fall under the community relations committee that I'm recommending that I think it's something and, and especially with the capital project and everything we talked about in the meeting before that the, that the problem isn't necessarily what we're trying to sell but how we're trying to sell and I think to get other people in the community involved in this committee it would benefit us greatly rather than just us sitting around saying huh how should we try to sell this project not to say that the whole board can't weigh in on it but again to, to shorten the amount of a meeting they're doing the legwork with the help of other people in the community and they're bringing it back to the board. I think is would be very beneficial, especially seeing what we need to accomplish in the near future. So, I don't know what you guys feel about that. And I would be willing to sit on that, that committee because I'm only on the policy committee. I think you're on two committees and I think you're on two committees. <coughs> Uh, the definition or construction of this committee, do you have any, any plan to play? Besides being community relations as to what they would do or how they would do it? Yeah, what I just said. So they yeah, but I'm, besides responding to electronic, uh, is there any other like physical pieces that you go into the community? Is that what you mean? Or are you just talking about having a response system? I'm just saying having system? Having having represent representation from different facets, a parent, a business leader, um, board members, people from the school district, different groups of people, different pockets who could all give information to say, you know, like, geez, it'd be beneficial if you guys did blah, 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 blah. It'd be helpful if you explained things, da, 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 da. And then we could 
put that information together and you meet four times a year or whatever and bring the information back to the board in a way to improve our community relations by having other stakeholders than just board members making the decision because that's what we're talking about is community relations. So that was right. that was my idea on that. And then under that, just one of the things would be enhancing our webpage for the community to be able to understand, you know, what we do, who's on the committees, what, what the committee um, what the committee dates are, so that people know, so those are advertised. Like, just, just put, if you go to other school districts, you see what I'm talking about. It's very simple, but what other people are doing. So, I don't know if anybody else would be willing to. I mean, I can just be one board member on there, or. Do we want to? I mean, would you want to do it, Tom? Do we want to accept community relations committees? First question. Well, I thought we discussed that at the last meeting where we were going to have everybody and we're going to have a part of the agenda put it under your unfinished business that was going to be community relations with all of us involved. Right. I know that you said that, but then I also know that you want the meetings to be shorter. So, again, it's committees serve the purpose of just that, to shorten a meeting. Right. So that are all. What, in what I'm hearing the last couple meetings is a lot of busy work and it's it's frustrating because it feels like we're not really getting to the business of the school district the, the, the really important stuff and and it's bogging things down if our capital project didn't pass because everybody's saying the community didn't get the message of what it was i wouldn't say that this is bogging anything down i would say this is something that we need to do but to spend create extra another time. committee when you have a group then of don't be on the committee volunteers. You, you wouldn't have to be but to create another committee and you mentioned multiple committees at the other meeting these guys work full time we all have families i think even to streamline we really we take advantage of this time and not be so focused on the small things and really focus on the big stuff that needs to get done. <clears throat> this seems like busy work to me. I, I don't think that, that, that enhancing our community relations is busy work. I think it's something that we need and to And that's why we discussed at the last meeting of having it and everybody agreed. People were nodding their heads at that meeting. Okay, saying, but yes, I also think it's beneficial it. to have other agree. stakeholders rather than just the board members. And other opinions and other, and, and that's not the case with, with the suggestion of doing it in the board meeting. I mean, that's my two cents. Yeah, can I make a suggestion that we, um, I do believe a community relations uh, committee would be good for the capital project. I think it would be applicable. And then let's get it up and see how it works in that instance. If it works, great, we'll continue it on. If we don't, don't we find it's an as needed basis, we can utilize it. I'll sit on it if you'd like to. I, I think we could do it, and I think we have to reach out because I think it's going to be beneficial to reach out to members of the community to communicate everything we need in a clear, concise fashion relative to the capital project. So, I, I mean, I do believe. Yeah, we have to reach out. Okay. Yes, and there's, and there's so many different venues we have to go, and I think the idea that understanding that this is part of the fabric of the community, both through as just as much as Oswego Health is, just as much as the university is, just as much as everything else is, and how important it is to the whole system, I think that's when we need to, to do that. So I'm, I, I would sit on that. Uh, I currently am only on the uh, facilities committee, so I'll do that. Okay, that would be great. And then maybe you and I together could come up with key people who we think would, yeah, who, who would help us the best mm -hmm. with, with mm -hmm. doing this. And then what we would do is we'll come up with the dates and then one of us will report to you. We'll, we need to, we'll need to figure out the dates rel relative to, you know, the capital vote when we're going to yep. look at that and start laying a plan for right. that. And, and any of these suggestions for committees, and I, maybe I should have prefaced that, would be exactly what you just said. I mean, that's what ad hoc means on a right, as needed, needed, as needed basis. Yes. And that's how I preface the whole conversation. Maybe, <coughs> I, maybe if you didn't know what ad hoc meant, but that's what that is. It's not well, saying that. Is good. No, 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 not no, you. No, 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 I'm not saying this you. Well, I know you understand. Job. I'm saying you, maybe yeah. other people can <laughs> understand what that what I meant by no, that. No, I know you I'm understand. Only kidding. I'm but only I, but that's what I'm saying. Is that and and from what I said is that with everything that's going on, I think that it would absolutely be us <coughs> to put something like this together to do the legwork so that we're saving time 
in a full board meeting talking about, you know, with all of us. It's certainly at that time anybody else could chime in, but I just think it organizationally it makes sense. Okay. Got a lot of notes. Got all that <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Do we have a decision? I think I understand where we are with unfinished business. Did the board agree that we're going to add a, uh, an item to the agenda, items for discussion? I think you have to check policy before you can do that. Yeah. Check the policy if it's yeah. just, just like I said. Why, why do we have to check the policy if we add items for discussion? Because if you're adding another line in the agenda, the agenda, there's, there's what needs to be covered in the agenda. So I'm going to move yeah. items exactly. for discussion Actually, to unfinished business. Actually, our agenda doesn't even okay. fit what you're talking about. It's different than that. Because I didn't no, look at not. it the other day. I looked at it the other day. Well, you said you didn't look at it. I'm gonna I didn't look at that. I didn't look at it. Yes, to the unfinished yes. business. Um, the unfinished business is to review the policy yeah. Yeah. and then make changes as needed if we choose to. The, no, the question, the policy in question was who creates the agenda. That 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 part of the policy, I don't recall ever reading. That's that's what I said. And the next is, I think I know where we are with committee chairs. I'm going to add a facilities report and the agenda. Where where does the board want to go on new and revisiting the committee system? That we had for many years, and then we so moved away from it. You mean meeting at the with the the way we used to do it where the first you meeting mean was the, the committee. The, the week of the uh, committee. The board committees where there would be a the curriculum, yeah. finance, and, and personnel. They were 20, 20 minutes, half hour a piece. So. They were quick, remember you would circulate when, but it's not going to be easy for you during this. Because, no, because you know, it's midday. Those that, are, that, was the, that, was the one thing, that was the one thing that I had asked, and that was the biggest yeah. discussion right. of last year was, can it be at 3, 4, or 5? that type of thing. If it can be at that, that's fine. I can make every one of them. 10 o'clock in the morning, I just can't make it. I'm just being honest. One and it's, one. Un, it's unrealistic to ask. Do we want to go back to the committee system? One. What would be the advantage of going back? What's wrong with the way we're going now? Well, uh, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I add to that? Unless that's the fault of the people yeah. who are doing it. I thought, Sam, well, my, my only opposition, the, my only opposition to why, not... I mean, you've experienced both. Of this. Why are the meetings lasting Well, it just started with the last four or five meetings have been long. Right. Up I don't until then, there were 45. Yeah, right. we, we haven't had meetings just, like this. Just, it's just the last, since you guys came on board. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Up until then, there were 45 minutes. 45 minutes. Really? Now. No, we had three meetings in a row I with very extensive no, executive know, sessions. That made them long. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And then this one, we had multiple presentations and an executive session. Right. So, so the committee meetings, I was, I enjoyed, right? I, there was a lot of feedback that were done within the committee meetings. We were able to ask, ask a lot of questions, especially first year on the board. I didn't know a lot of stuff, so I was asking a ton of questions during those times. Sometimes we ran over, sometimes it was 15 minutes. I got it, I was able to register it. We buzzed through it during the, the regular meeting. My only concern with it was the time. It was the middle of the morning or middle of the day. Yeah, I was there, I got mine. Absolutely. Three but people over there got their answers. But then you come to the regular week and the other four people may yeah. have got the and, and I get it. And that was why we decided that was why we decided to get rid of it. Because if you just if you just read it. If you just because we take action at every meeting. Before it was like we were presenting items in the in the committee meeting and then we just weren't taking action because that was that's what we're going to do in two weeks right. and it's, so it streamlined the business of the district to make to move on them as they were presented and we ended up you know, we, oh, we ended up because the business of the district had to be, had to be done right. we ended up bringing stuff to both that never went through the meeting right that was happening all the time which all is what i presented the right. idea of getting away from that system well, I'm, I'm pretty sure what we got. Yeah, I like how we got to it. I'm good with it. Then I would just suggest that these meetings be more efficient so that we're 
I think I think things will settle down. Everybody's I think we will be think we've been just fine with it. When you think about, I mean, there's people who sat out here for an hour and a half hour and order an executive session at some meetings. That's what makes meetings fine. Yeah. Right. Not, not the business of four hours tonight. Don't oh, quit looking at the clock. I was just trying to adjust. <laughs> So, <laughs> you paid by the office. No, I don't mean well, the last like thing was that right um, we are. were supposed to come up with uh, the um, the board liaison for each school, seven schools, seven board members, and I had said last the last meeting, you know, in, in, in efforts to avoid any confrontations or, or whatever, that maybe we just pull the names out of the hat and. Uh, then I had talked to a couple of board members who were like, well, geez, I'd really like to be at such and such school. So I thought, you know what, let's just take the temperature, see what people think. If everybody gives me their number one and number two choice and there's no conflicts, hey, then we're done. But I only heard back from <coughs> one, two, three, four of you. So two I didn't hear back from. So I don't know what everybody wants me to you do going forward. You want to know what your vision is. Why do you want a rep in why do you want a board member sign these bills? Well, it, I guess it all started from when I was reading through our policies and the listed committees that we have. One of them was a visitation committee, of which since I've been on the board, we've never had a visitation committee, although it's listed in our policy. So, but when I read it, I had thought, and I had talked to a couple of principals who were like, geez, we used to have, because I was like, it would be pretty cool to, there's a couple things. Number one, when we get all of our uh, um, emails from different principals saying, you're invited to come to this. What, what I found last year was happening is everybody was assuming somebody else was gonna go to it. And then either we would have no representation or we'd have five of us at the same thing. And I thought, geez, if every person, every board member was a liaison, liaison to a particular school, then home and school knew what the connection was, that principal could contact that particular board member and then that board member could go to the events or if they couldn't go, could say, hey, I can't go, can you attend such and such? And then we're not having to worry about overlapping or no representation. When I get invites to go to functions at different buildings, I never assume, thought never entered my head that there, maybe no one's gonna go or maybe more people will go. I just, just, my own personal decision. Do I want to go? I'll go. I don't care if you went or anybody else went. That was my decision. I want to go or I don't want to go. So I don't care what you will do. But we're invited every, every get all kinds of, either in the mail, by email, uh, whenever there's something going on in the building, we're invited. I, the, 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 the system you're talking about long ago, long time ago, I was here. I was part of that. And I'll tell you, uh, it was a little bit uncomfortable. There's a lot of uh, staff members, teachers, principals. Uh, if you're, if you're the eighth national building, and as a board member, you walk into that building and there's nothing going on, you're just going in. People get nervous. They think you're there looking for something, yeah, something bad. You yeah, know? Right. Yeah, believe me, it's, it's. Well, I don't know why any board member would do that. I mean, that's what's I'm not saying a board member is doing that. I'm saying a board member. If I want to go, if I want to go over to Riley School tomorrow. Walk through the building to see what's going on, how the report is doing. You know, I can do that, and I should have the right to do that. But by me doing that and not, not being invited there uh, for a certain function, there's people in that building when you get nervous and say, What's he doing here? What's he looking for? Believe me, it's going to happen because I've, I've seen it in the past. I, I just don't, I don't care. Uh, I didn't answer your text. I was away and didn't get in until a couple days later. But, uh, I'm not going to pick a building. I don't care if you do it out of the head or what. Uh, uh, I'll go to any building I want, any time I want. What's I don't the, understand. What, what is the, I mean, you, your reference and the policy, what's the policy say? What, what the, the policy says that it just lists what our committees are. And one of the committees that's listed in the policy is a visitation committee. And it says that, and then my idea just kind of grew out of reading that and being like, huh never had a visitation committee. The visitation committee, as read in the brief, if you read it in the policy, says that they are to be put together to do at least an annual, um, as a minimum, um, tour of each school and or department and then report back to the entire board. That's what it says in, in our policy. That's the responsibility of, of, of the board. Of, 
last year, you'll so, remember that I built that structure yeah, into we went our school. Yeah, we went before right. The second meeting of every month was in a building and it included like either that. a tour right. or a presentation by staff. Mm -hmm. um, I like yeah. that. We've done it most years I've been here. It's not just, it's listed under, it's, well, it's kind of, it's kind of screwy, really, when you think about it, because that particular um, policy, it says committee meetings, of, or rather, committees of the board. And I believe it, if, I, if my memory serves me correct, it says audit, policy, and visitation. So there's nothing on there about a wellness committee. So I mean, again, in talking about policy, this would be a policy that needs to go for the policy committee, because yeah. it needs to be altered. Yes. Because I, I think it the says adopted in 2011, and that's, that. that's what it is, 2011. So, so whatever it is, what it is, but that's just another example of. Right. When we did that, doing when, when we did that, and we went for a sign building. I think when Sean Van was on the board, and yeah, the lady was way before, you, before you, and uh, right. but I didn't realize that there was any policy that was telling us we had to do that. It was just an idea. Somebody had a board meeting. We all they all wanted to do it. So, but I didn't know if there was a policy. Then we didn't put the policy. In. Right. So I guess so. So basically, from that, that's where my idea came from. You know that they would, in order to make sure that, because I, I do think I. I mean, like you just said, you go. You happen to go. You probably of all the board members go to the most amount of things. There, and yeah. And there's other board members who you know go to very few, which I understand. And people have jobs. They have lives. I completely get that. But what I think is unfortunate is that there's some schools that are far less represented and visited by the school board members than others. And I guess this was a way to create, uh, I guess, equity amongst the schools where each board, each school felt like they were being heard and that they had representation and that they knew the person to reach out and that someone was going to be there to see all the great things that they're doing. That was my point. Right. I mean, and that's no, all, but that's the, that's always tried to that's do. Maybe, maybe so that's, I might ask the principal to send out an invitation for it once in a while. But I don't come and spend a day. Come Dean spend did that. Hour. We were yeah. going to the school. We went to school. school. I enjoyed, I enjoyed it. Again this year. I enjoyed that. Yeah. I liked Two it. years ago, I, I asked them to the present their oh, yeah. comprehensive school improvement plans. And last year, we asked them to give tours of their school and include student work and things like that. But we're going to change the thing. It's in. really enjoyable to visit the school, especially the elementary schools, yeah. when there's students in the building. And yeah, that's absolutely. that's when I get. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's when I feel good about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fact that we had our meetings in the buildings and the principal all included, right. include the kids in, in the presentation and the tour. That was great. It was great. It was great. All for it. So again, I think that we just like so to put the closure on this. I think you need to find the policy, and if it's something that's so supposed to be the one that we so this is it. going to so unfinished. <laughs> but otherwise, Dean, don't stop bringing us school to school. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's already in the. Yeah. <laughs> so then every, like everybody, so everybody's saying they don't want to do the board meeting. No, I said find the policy. Seven, find the policy. If you're saying look at the policy, let's look at what we want. I know, but we define policy. We as I understand. the board can say. What you're saying is, I, I, I don't even know that. I don't. Need, none of us know. It. Yeah. Even no, if we have a visitation no, policy, I don't, I don't think it has anything to do. I'm not going to agree on that. I don't want to do this. For example, if Tommy wanted to visit Leighton and wasn't familiar with Leighton School, you could, you could. Well, we talk, actually talked about this last week. That. And I think Dave is going to provide you with. I have some. Yeah. I missed that. But yeah, we got to do a tour of the yeah, sorry, I that. Yeah, okay, great. Okay. Would there be, I think. sorry, go ahead. Would there be any other items? Anymore? Oh, <coughs> I have an item, but I'll make it quick. <laughs> I will, I really will. I'll make it quick. Uh, I had the uh, fortune, yeah, I guess that's what it was, <coughs> to be able to go, um, the other day, Amy had sent out the letter regarding visiting the Senator Schumer's office and also uh, Congressman Katko's office. Um, so I went out and visited both, uh, and Congressman Katko was there, and I did uh, have a connection here. I don't know who was writing our grants. Um, who would that be? Dean? Would I be Carrie, right? Awesome. Uh, the connection at his office, who for, particularly for grants, and he said he would guide us, you know, to. Um, 
to a million dollars. Yeah, it's not too. Um, yeah, but it was it was great. Sixty million would be nice. Right. And also, yeah. And uh, yeah. I mean, the other things that he was talking about were, um, you know, looking into the funding for the IDEA and getting that. What's our percentage of funding for our IDEA? Do we know? Approximately. IDEA funding. Total just under a million dollars. Percentage-wise, though, do you know what it is? I know it's. A, he was talking about congressionally, it's supposed to be at 40%. Oh, and, ne and we're oh, sitting around 16% maybe? Yeah. 16, 17, yeah. So he did, he did at least say that he would try to, uh, to move that along, which was kind of neat. Um, on the same token, regarding the Shinneman Foundation, it was great that we got the um, 25,000 from Shinneman. Yeah, we that for like three or four years. This is year three for the leader. Right, but also, I would, um, as we're writing the grants, I think we can, I've, I've been spoken with some, some people, and I think that we can think bigger. I think we could can think bigger, and I think we should think bigger in terms of those applications. You just do um, the keys. Um, <laughs> I, I think for sure. Yeah. For sure. Right. You, oh, you, 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 you got <laughs> But anyway, no, and I think it's important because I, I think anything that we can offset, anything that we can do, you know, in that by finding revenue streams that are out there, they're going to take a burden off the taxpayer. We got to do it. I, um, I've been around to meet some people, and I appreciate everybody that I've met so far. I'll try to go around to meet more people. But I, if anybody has a, any information or wants to talk to me about anything, please feel free and contact me because I think the more informed we are, the better decisions we make. Can so, we, Carrie, do we know who wrote the, the grant to Sherman for FBI? Donna Simmons. Donna did? Oh, yeah. She's been writing it for the last three years. Maybe we should contact her and see how what some of the other schools. I mean, that's, that's her program, the leader of the program. Gary, I think Judy will set it, helped her with helped that, her. too. I think so. All those connections. Oh, let me bring that real back to NS uh, NISPA versus CMY. This was looking on the national level. Is it worth it to put that go for one year or to take CMY to split a state level while this was exploring the national level um, as far as aid and, and uh, that money? Would it be worth it to? Because um, NISPA is not necessarily as focused in the state. So if we would it be worth taking one shot at CMY two for a year to see if there's any benefit? I think they've been a great resource previously to us. Do we want CNY on unfinished business? Why don't we? I think that would be great. If we get it at half price, is what you're saying. And again, all of the training is free. Sure, and let's try it. Let's try it. I'm sorry. See how that works. And if we feel there's a bang for the buck, anyway, let's keep that. Motion to adjourn. I just, I just want to thank everybody out there and apologize for such a long meeting. You all have sat there for a very long time, so I do appreciate that with the, you know, executive session in the beginning and the, the presentations and the, um, a lot of conversation because we're trying to get ourselves aligned here with a new board. So I thank you all very much for all of your time. Could I have a moment? I have to. Sorry, I was going to kill you. I can call it the executive session. Okay. A reason? Personnel. So, and it said it, it's... Could I have a motion? Move. Second? <laughs> Second. We're going to move back to the Oh, no, I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to take that back, Tom? I, I can't <laughs> rescind it. So, Tom first, Brandon, second? Yeah. yeah. And will there be a need for a vote after executive no. session? No. Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.